Let's now run through purchases. Purchases is actually the mirror of sales, so a lot of it may seem familiar. If we click purchases, it'll take us through the easy setup assistant. And if we click next, it'll ask us what layout will be like. We don't actually have a time billing here. We just have service, if I sell services, item, if I'm selling items from stock. A professional will allow me to put in dates and miscellaneous again for adjustments. I'll stick with no default. And if I click next, it'll ask me what is my normal expense account for buying things. I prefer to leave this blank. It's amazing, a lot of stuff which I might buy might be used in the business, but there's equally an amount of stuff that I would have to allocate to other expense codes. And again, a credit limit that has been set with my suppliers. Unusual, do we have credit limits from suppliers? If I need to buy it, maybe he's got one, but I wouldn't normally set one. I'll click next. Normally the tax code most often used by my suppliers, I will leave it as GST. Whilst it may be a standard default, there will be suppliers who do not collect GST. For example, I might have subcontractors who turn over less than currently $75,000 a year. They may not be registered for GST. I will have to put them in with a separate code. The freight tax code, Again, maybe GST, it may not be, it depends who's supplying it. I'll leave those two as defaults. If I click next, it then asks me if my suppliers pay me, and if so, select the payment method that most of my suppliers use. And I can hear the cogs ticking over, suppliers paying me. There are, in fact, a number of occasions when my suppliers might pay me. For example, I might have some merchandising agreement with some suppliers that if I sell so much of their stock, they may pay me later a form of commission. In which case, how would they normally pay me? I would normally fill that in when I actually receive the payment. And if my suppliers expect their payment, this is the other way, me actually paying them, what is my usual? I would normally fix that at the supplier level rather than a generic field across my whole of my company. So I'm going to leave that as it is. Click next. My account for paying bills, do I normally pay out of my check account? As in I'm using uh, BPay or do I prefer electronic payment? I actually find electronic payment if I'm paying a lot of suppliers at the same time to be the best method. In which case, I would default my check account, as it shows there. If I click on the down arrow, I would normally use the electronic clearing account, account 11190, and I'll use that account. If I'm paying just out of my bank, just doing the odd transfer, maybe I'd leave it as the bank account. If I click next, it then asks me to put in a list of my suppliers. I may have a file which has got my supplier's names in it. I might like to import. Again, we'll show you how to import from a file later on. Otherwise, I could click New and fill them out. I would actually do that as they arise. Maybe for my first two or three months, I'm busy putting them in, and then they start repeating. If I click Next, it then asks me, do I have any historical purchases for my supplier? If I'm an existing business and I'm starting to use NYOB at a certain date, I may have some suppliers I need to put in. Otherwise, if I'm a brand new business, I'll just click Next. We've now finished using the Easy Setup Assistant and I'm going to close. I'm not at this stage going to run through payroll. Most businesses, when they're setting up, it's just you, and you don't have any employees. In order to use the Easy Setup Assistant for payroll, you actually need to have used payroll before. We'll actually run through what it is required when we get onto actually setting up payroll, which is a separate series and not for everybody.